Welcome to FOB TV, the future of business. I'm your host, Kevin Benedict, and I want to welcome each of you to our program today. Now, this program is really is part of a series which I'm very excited about. We did a virtual event. The event was called Reimagining Higher Education and the University of the Future. We brought in four panelists to uh, share their insights with us. Those panelists represent three different countries, three different universities, plus the giant educational publishing company, Wiley. In what ways will universities need to rethink their operations, their business models, and maybe even their purpose, given this kind of move into the digital world and the response to the pandemic? I think that's a key question, Kenny, which, which every single university in the world will be thinking about now. How can they pivot in terms of the new challenges and ways of working that the pandemic has brought? Because one thing's for sure, we're not going to be going back and returning to the ways of working that existed prior to the pandemic. In this new digital world, we will need to think about you know, uh, those student experiences as, as we spoke about. Uh, at a side business school perspective, I'm particularly proud to say that our purpose, I think, extends and is very applicable to the, to the current global pandemic. The mission of the business school is to tackle world scale problems. We exist to create the next generations of socially responsible, ethical, moral, entrepreneurial leaders that can go out into society, into communities with a real force to tackle those world scale problems. And I think that is more appropriate, more current, more relevant than ever before. So I don't, it, it may not be answering your question 100% directly. But I think what it's allowing us to do at Side Business School is actually focus under the microscope on our on our mission and our strategy even more because we think it's more relevant than ever before. Yes, I think we're still figuring that out, of course. Um, and uh, it becomes increasingly important that we're connected beyond the university walls to the communities that we're situated in. Um, and that includes both uh, community organizations and companies that are situated in our vicinity. Because increasingly, we are seeing the university as a hub, but a very porous hub with the community that we are situated in. Um, and so how do we enable more and more of that cross work to happen, uh, those tighter connections to uh, community organizations and companies? Uh, that means that when the student is coming to our campus, they are coming here really not just to be on campus, but to be part of that network that extends off campus. Part of what was happening, it's becoming increasingly, I think, part of the way accelerating in the pandemic. Yeah, well, I think it's different for every school. I mean, especially in America, there's so many different kinds of schools from community colleges, you know, up to tier one or research universities. And so I think different schools at different, at different parts of that ecosystem will be affected differently. I do think um, we have to rethink the business models. At the end of the day, the cost of education for uh, middle-class families in the US has just skyrocketed. I think uh, online degrees will, will start to flourish and take off, but um, That'll primarily impact things like community colleges, state colleges, where uh, people are really looking for that cost-effective savings and not necessarily the full university residential experience that we may have in the back of our minds when we're thinking about education. Um, here at Cornell Tech, we're thinking hard about how do we take ideas around technology to a much broader range of students uh, you know, ar ar around New York. So we're partnering with K-12 as well as uh, organizations like CUNY, the, the City University of New York, and it's 12 or 12 of its campuses to see, uh, can we build partnerships and relationships that reach a, a broader audience with the materials that we're developing here at Cornell Tech in partnership with other institutions? So yes, we're going to be rethinking it, but I don't know that there's one size fits all for, for all universities. I think it's going to be different for, for different ones. Three. Universities and course providers and training providers all need to be looking at how are we delivering learning in a more flexible way? 
are we making that learning accessible from a cost perspective, perspective from a time perspective? And are we supporting uh, students who might need extra help, extra remediation, because they don't have the prerequisite skills or education to succeed in a traditional college environment, or they don't have them yet? So I think um, significantly we need to invest across the board in you know higher education institutions, course providers, online program providers, publishers, in making those um, the materials we create, the courses we create, the education we deliver as accessible and equitable as possible. Um, a great example of this is uh, there's a big shift in what they used to call developmental education. So uh, universities and primarily community colleges had programs uh, for so many years around developmental math and developmental English skills. So let's say you're a student who graduates from high school, you don't have the needed skills in English or math to actually succeed in getting a degree um, or a certificate. So the higher education ecosystem started out with these programs called Developmental Math and, and English, but what they found is most students who fell into those categories and had to take those courses never made it beyond that developmental education path. So they accumulated debt, they didn't actually accelerate their career readiness or upskill for a career, and they never earned the degree. So what we've seen with state institutions, with higher education institutions, and, and frankly, publishers and course providers, is there's a need to provide what we call co-requisite remediation. And so that would enable a student to come into college, take something like algebra or chemistry, and then gather the prerequisite skills while they're taking that class. So they're not spending cycles of time and money trying to get ready for college. They're actually learning while while they're in college. And so that's a, a good example, I think, of how the business model is changing, how the organizational and operational workflow of, of education is changing. Uh, Wiley, we acquired a company about a year ago uh, called Newton, a little over a year ago, which offers personalized adaptive learning, and they have a large swath of courses in that co-requisite remediation space. So again, if you're a student taking uh, any math course in college or a chemistry course, you can get that additional co-requisite remediation while you're taking that course without using up the instructor's time and without having to take those traditional old school developmental courses so that you can progress through your career and ultimately earn the degree or the certificate that you are seeking faster.